Hello. Hey, how are you? Good morning. Good morning to you. Top of the morning. <laughs> hey, Elijah, you see that little sign there? It says, of course I talk to myself. Sometimes I need expert advice. <laughs> Did you see what I sent you this morning? I did. Isn't that crazy? That was from 2013. I wrote those down. And how many have come true? Well, ignite a culture of creativity. That's happening. Running an organization in different ways. That's how I did LR Future. Um, but turn it global for global evolution. We're working on that. Values-based leadership I've used, education to, to create powers of creativity. I believe us women and you, I think what's going to happen, I see, I don't even know if Carrie knows this yet. I think we're going to create a new education system out of all the work we're doing. Um, she doesn't know that, but I got goosebumps the other day when we were having our call. Because don't forget, she's a principal, so she has her master's. And there's no doubt, Elijah, Education still in the old paradigm and a certificate on the wall is crucial. Right. So we have her as that person. Even though we can all create curriculum, she's got the credentials, right? Well, and she, she understands the system. She understands the buying process. She understands uh, how to bring something into school system that hopefully would work, right? Yeah. And she knows how to do it in a mild way that doesn't overwhelm the old system right and i'm kind of thinking like myself like money will be part of that right that system that we're going to learn the way we work with and deal with money and finances and whatever that's going to look like in the future is a big part of it huge yeah it's huge. all like wow so we have you know like the three the learning the learning component right out to the world the education right we've got the two the economics to bring the money the shift in money that's happening we've got the five with the um you know the ultra uh, arts culture creativity being brought out in a different way yeah it's it's like i said to sylvia this morning i just sent her a quick note because i got the most beautiful note from rhonda the lady that runs the age-friendly business academy uh-huh um i'll read it to you I, it made me cry she says, oh my God, capital letters with hearts. And she goes, Lori, I just listened to your presentation. You hit it right out of a flipping park. No, you hit it clear off the planet. Thank you very much. I can't tell you how excited I am and what a gift this is. This will be to all the business owners and professionals. I want to especially acknowledge your generosity, not surprised, but deeply grateful. What a blessing to know you and to share you. Talk soon, dear friend. <sighs> so... You know, Elijah, that is something I have to admit, I prob I put in probably more effort for that talk than a lot of things I've done in my life because I've kind of sometimes you just go on a whim, right? Right. But I put I put more into it this time. So a lot into it. It was so big. And then we weeded it out. And then you and I had the conversation on how we could blend in the new paradigm, like with the map of present future. Right. Oh, past, present, future. That was perfect up on the screen for me to make me um, to talk about the new paradigm and then the conversation killers and how important those are, are in an organization and then telling them all that they're going to get gifted a set, right? So I have to do a video so that when we gift it to them, it would be fun, Elijah, to do it in such a way that all of a sudden they get this and it's almost like a wrapped with a bow ah you know like wrapped with the hub logo and all of a sudden it just opens and there they've got the 30 conversation killers right right um a bow that's a great idea um some sort of gif yeah yeah anyway yeah. i thought that would be kind of cool i don't know what that takes and how that would look and then i could be i could do a video it would be short right and put the offer out to them that we could train so i just have to put we just have to put a plan together on how what that'll look like training for the convo killers right no i think that's a great uh 
the gifting convo yeah. and then the enrollment convo. Yes. Gifting. Yes. <gasps> <laughs> it's funny how other people don't quite know the inflow matrix madness. Oh, they don't. <laughs> You know, like Christy, something's happening to her because she is like feeling overwhelmed, right? Because type eight, she's a type eight personality. So type eights want to take action. So the seven's got all these ideas. The four's got the ideas and the creativity and then the eight's going, okay, now it's up to me to take the action. And I told her the other day, I said, Christy, it's not up to you. And just because we say things doesn't mean you need to jump on it and do it. Because it becomes over, it becomes overwhelming, right? <laughs> I got this idea. I got this idea. I can't I see. Uh, Can right. you imagine? You're like, right. Between the two of us, I mean, we drive yeah. anyone bar me. We would drive her. We'll drive. We would drive anybody bonkers, right? And right. you and I understand it, and we know how to do this, but we still need that calm to keep things level, and you know. Well, well I just, I, I really appreciate her. You know, again, that Action Jackson type person who's, you know, who who can be a little intimidating to people like us, ideas, but then all of a sudden someone's going, okay, well, let's do it here. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, I've had two people from the hub factor come to me and say that they felt cut off by her. They felt um, she's overbearing, um, things like that. So I'm trying to figure out a way now to work with her to say, Christy, when a person picks their cards, our job as a facilitator isn't to butt in and give them answers. Our job as a facilitator is to ask the questions. Then we allow other people to give their comments, not specific to that person and telling them what they should be doing, but to see what, tell them what you see in the card so that they can see it for themselves in how they're thinking. So yeah, I've had two people, Rhonda and Sheila, both say she's overbearing and Rhonda felt totally cut off and she said, I don't really want to come back if she's facilitating because she's like a, and I go, you know, Rhonda, just allow it. She's got that dominant, strong personality, but think about this. Think about the insecurities. She's afraid just like anybody else. She's nervous. And that's why type eight or any of us butt in so much is because we're trying to fill space. Well, and also I think there's an excitement too, where they're seeing yeah. something and they really want to give back the feedback. And now they finally have an opportunity to do so in a, right. in a, in a space that they can, but yeah. then you need other skill set, right? You need your, because mm -hmm. if you're used to being shut down or you're used to not getting your time, mm -hmm. you know, that's what's so great about it, right? Like, finally, I get to say something, but then it's, you know, it's, it's either too little or too much. So we have to. Yeah. Yeah, we have to find that common ground. And I think it's important that, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll sit down with her, we'll sit down and we'll talk about how, you know, how she's able to sit back a little bit more as a facilitator and allow the people to do what they need to do, right? Don't feel you need to answer for everybody. For sure. And I think yeah. that's, that's like as the wise elder coming in with the feedback convo. Yeah. You know, your grace and being able to do it in such a way where she doesn't feel criticized, but just good yeah. feedback, right? Because she probably yeah. knows it already. Like she, she knows she's strong. She knows she's. No, oh, she knows exactly. She knows that she's learning. She was the first one to jump on and do her total personality. I mean, Carrie's done hers, Sylvia's done hers, but she jumped on it right away. Plus, had her partner and her mom and her stepdad do it. See, that's awesome. Yeah, because I noticed when I talk about the Enneagram of personalities, the first personalities that jump on it are the sevens and eights. The uh, April Henheffers, the the Lindsay Henheffers, you know, those kind of people, they're sevens and eights. They're very much about, oh my gosh, how do we, how do I get to know myself better? Right. So, yeah. So uh, I, did, Kay, did Kaylee send you my presentation? No. Okay, I'll get her to send that to you. So you or got it. it's done. It's ready. It's done. It's done. She's it, already it watched it. It's sent. And Rhonda oh watched God. it. And that was her feedback after she watched it, what I just read you. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she's really happy with it. Oh, you do. And so it went perfect. We did it in one, one, one taping. Take? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you know your stuff you know your stuff right it's it's not like you got to come up with it no no that's stuff that's so natural to me and I sent a letter I just sent a, a, a LinkedIn note to a guy he used to own Knight Archer Insurance his name is James Archer and I sold my insurance agency to them five years ago he's a type seven in the Enneagram he, he, they bought the business and him and I planned to let's build this together because I wanted to see it succeed. And so did he, but he ended up as a type seven. He ended up in a rehabilitation center down in Montreal, alcohol, drugs and everything, because he's this young guy, 42, that gets put in this big role within the company and they're buying the Nexus credit union insurance. They bought LR future. They bought all this stuff. And you know what people do? They just glom on to people like that, Elijah. And I think it became overwhelming. So he said to me before he left, he found a building down in a place called Fort Sam. And in Fort Sam, it's where the TB clinic used to be back in the day where they put people for with the TB. And uh, that's where us girls are going this next weekend. We're going to Fort Sam to spend two days doing planning. Awesome. So James Archer before he left for Montreal, he saw this building down there, this place at Fort Sand, and he goes, he wanted to buy it, but it was over a million bucks. He went away for two months or however long to Montreal. He came back, it was 600,000. He bought it. So they've renovated, they're turning it into a, it was going to be a corporate, his mind was corporate wellness. So he goes, Lori, we're going to be doing work together because I know what you do and how you run your business. So it was going to be about corporate wellness, but I think after he ended up in Montreal, he realized it it was bigger than that, like addiction and stuff like that. So he bought it. They're working on it. A place near, not near there, but a ways away, it burnt down. And it had quite a few people there at this clinic, right, at this rehab center. And so James went to the town and said, these guys wanted to use his facility till they rebuilt their own. The city denied it. The town denied it. Like, isn't that crazy? Because of the idea of rehab kind of thing? Rehab, yeah. They don't that's, want that's, that's around the or... stigma. Right. And I mean, Gabor Maté, right? You know Gab- Gabor Maté? Yeah. He's in Vancouver, right? So anyway, I sent James a note today and I said, I'm going to be in the area and us girls are gonna be in the area. And I said, if that works or the week after something, I wanna drive up and see his facility because I have a feeling we're gonna be bringing this stuff into that facility. Uh Yeah, I really do. Well, I mean, I I have, did you see the healing plan? The healing prayer? The healing plan. No. Um, No, I didn't. Wait one second here. Let me. 